The next item of business is a statement by Marie Todd on early learning and childcare expansion. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Marie Todd for up to 10 minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. We've made an ambitious commitment to offer every child in Scotland the opportunity to grow up in a country where they feel loved, safe and respected. Each and every one of them deserves the chance to reach their potential. And this government is dedicated to achieving the same. That's why we've committed to almost doubling the funded early learning and childcare entitlement for all three and four year olds and eligible two year olds from August 2020. At the heart of this expansion is the focus on quality. The earliest years of life are crucial for every child. Evidence tells us that if our early learning and childcare offer is to help to give the children the best start in life and to contribute to closing the poverty-related uh, attainment gap, it has to be of high quality. Yesterday we launched the funding Follows the Child approach, which is underpinned by a national standard that's clearly focused on driving high quality ELC for our children and their families. Our approach is provider neutral. That means that all providers delivering the funded hours, regardless of whether they're in the public, private or the third sector, including childminders, will have to meet the same national standard. This provides reassurance to parents and carers that any setting offering the funded hours can offer their child a high quality ELC experience. Funding Follows the Child places the choice in parents' hands, enabling them to access their child's funded entitlement from any provider that meets the national standard and has a place available and is willing to enter a contract with the local authority. High quality experiences for our children are underpinned by strong, positive and trusting relationships with the staff they spend time with in early learning and childcare. The national standard underlines our commitment to ensuring that the workforce is professional, dedicated and skilled and that practitioners receive the support that they deserve and are empowered to develop their practice in innovative ways. We've engaged extensively with the sector and in particular with providers to finalise the details of funding follows the child approach. And I am very, very grateful to everyone who took the time to respond to the consultation or to attend one of our engagement events. The national standard has the full backing of COSLA. Both central and local government are fully committed to this new approach. ELC provision must be financially sustainable so that providers across all sectors are willing and able to deliver the funded hours. The Scottish Government and COSLA agreed a multi-year funding package which enables the payment of sustainable rates to funded providers and ensures that each child's funded entitlement is free at the point of access. The package includes funding to enable providers to pay all of the childcare workers delivering the funded entitlement at least the living wage, the real living wage. This commitment represents the first step from our government to ensure our contracts and agreements reflect our fair work first principles in practice. The hourly funding rates received by private and third sector providers will significantly increase as a result of the funding deal. The expansion of funded ELC also offers us as a, an opportunity to ensure that no child in ELC goes hungry because of their background. And it also supports the development of healthy eating habits at a crucial stage. And that's why from August 2020, every child attending a funded ELC session will be provided with a free meal. The funding to deliver this commitment is additional to the sustainable rate for funded providers. Local authorities will ensure that there is transparency for funded providers as to the funding being provided to deliver the free meals. The expansion provides an opportunity to transform the way that we deliver early learning and childcare. Playing, learning and having fun outdoors helps to improve well-being and resilience it helps to increase health through physical activity. And it provides children with the opportunity to develop a lifelong appreciation of the natural world. The national standard ensures that every child receiving funded early learning and childcare 
whether they are in rural settings or right in the heart of our cities, will have access to outdoor play during the session. In collaboration with the Care Inspectorate and Inspiring Scotland, we'll publish Out to Play, an online resource with practical guidance for creating outdoor play experiences in early learning and childcare, with advice on how to access and create safe, nurturing and inspiring outdoor learning experiences. I commend its publication to Parliament as an important step towards increasing outdoor play and learning in early learning and childcare. And whilst quality is absolutely at the heart of our approach, we know that flexibility for families is a welcome element of the expansion. We intend to introduce legislative changes ahead of August 2020 to increase the maximum length of a funded ELC session to 10 hours. We are confident that we can demonstrate that providers are able to offer a high quality experience over longer sessions and the national standard will offer opportunities for us to measure this over time through care inspectorate quality evaluations. However, we will monitor the impact of this change to ensure that there's no detrimental impact on children's well-being and outcomes. Providers from all parts of the sector will be vital to ensuring the delivery of our ambitions. Our new funding follows the child approach will ensure that local authorities assess the potential impacts of their policy and investment decisions on the sustainability of other ELC providers in their area including in relation to the recruitment of high quality staff. We're, already, we're also working closely with Scotland Excel to ensure that the processes for becoming a funded provider are simplified and to reduce the burden on settings and commissioners. Today, I can announce a comprehensive delivery support plan for providers, which will support the financial sustainability of providers, strengthen partnership working, support workforce recruitment and training, and improve communication with parents and carers. As part of this, we'll work with the Care Inspectorate to recruit additional improvement advisors. They will identify and support settings who are already offering funded hours to meet the quality evaluation criteria within the national standard if they're not currently meeting this. In order to encourage meaningful and genuine partnership working, we'll build on the work of the ELC Partnership Forum with a summit for providers and local authorities to showcase good practice and partnership working. And this will further support the delivery of high quality ELC for all our children. This plan will play a key role in ensuring that everyone included in the expansion to 1140 hours feels valued, respected and included in the ambitions that we have for our youngest children in our society. Local delivery of the expansion is now well underway in communities across Scotland. Local authorities reported in September that over 11,000 children are already benefiting from access to more than 600 hours of early learning and childcare, including 1,100 eligible two-year-olds. I've had the pleasure of visiting a number of settings already providing 1140 hours and I have been absolutely thrilled to hear of the positive benefits that children and their parents are experiencing. This is an ambitious and challenging transformation programme. We need robust and transparent governance arrangements to ensure that the expansion is delivered on time. As I set out to Parliament in October, we've established a joint delivery board to oversee progress towards delivery of the expanded entitlement, which I co-chair with Councillor Stephen McCabe, my counterpart at COSLA. The board received its first update on local authority progress when it met in Greenock on the 31st of October. The Improvement Service is working with local authorities to collect data on workforce recruitment, creation of new capacity and uptake twice a year and I can confirm to Parliament today that the first report is now available on the Scottish Government website. This report shows that we are on track to deliver the expansion but there are no grounds for complacency and we must continue working together to ensure that the capacity and the capability that we need to deliver the expansion is in place across Scotland. Presiding Officer, our funding follows the child approach and the national standard that underpins it presents us with a fantastic opportunity 
to show the importance of early learning and childcare in improving outcomes for our children and our families. We have ambitious aspirations to help ensure that our children can realise their full potential. And we hope that by prioritising high quality early learning and childcare and unlocking choice, we will ensure that all our children have opportunities to learn, play and flourish. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement and I'll allow around 20 minutes. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons and I call on Alison Harris. Thank you. I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement. We welcome the national standard and the adoption of the Scottish Conservatives provider neutral principle. Listening to the Minister's statement, you would think that all is going well. But in truth, the rollout of this policy is in trouble. The goalposts are constantly shifting and this policy needs better governance. As the Minister mentioned in her statement, the rollout is already well underway in communities across Scotland. So, in light of what many providers have told us, can I ask the Minister why it has taken until now to provide a delivery support plan for providers? Also, in the operating guidance published by the Government yesterday, it is stated that to receive funding for provision, private providers must adhere to the national standard whilst also committing to work within the parameters of the local authority's model of delivery. This translates, Minister, to one national standard and 32 local standards. Total inconsistency. So what concrete reassurances can the Minister give to private providers that in adhering to the national standard, they won't continue to be excluded with their businesses suffering? Thank you. Marie Todd. I welcome the support from the Conservative Party for this um, expansion. I absolutely am um, delighted to receive it, actually. Um, I can assure you that there is very strong governance around this. And as I said, I've, we've published um, information today on the website which shows um, progress on delivery for this um, expansion. As you mentioned in your question, 11,000 children are already benefiting from this. And I see and I hear stories everywhere I go, every visit I go on, where somebody is receiving 1140 hours already. There is undoubtedly, I can see the benefit already. There is a very profound impact on the ability of the children to fulfill their potential. In terms of adherence to the national standard, there will be, abs let me be absolutely clear on this point, that in by 2020, when this is fully rolled out, the only standard that funded providers will have to adhere to is the national standard. And that standard was developed with the support of partner providers and with full commitment from COSLA. That's the only standard. There will be no extras. And as I mentioned at the meeting that we held with partner providers for this concern about extra standards being applied was raised, I would be very grateful if partner providers and members across the chamber could contact me and give me information if they hear of that occurring. Now, we recognise the scale of the challenge ahead in the programme that, that we committed to in building these actions. And undoubtedly, um, there is a challenge and um, you know, it's an ambitious plan. It's going to be challenging to deliver. And that's why today, with the delivery support plan for providers, we've put in place a number of actions to support the financial sustainability of providers. 100% business rate relief already happened. But through the multi-year funding, I expect to see the rate going to partner providers increase over the next year and increase again right up to 2020. Ian Gray. Thank you, President Officer, and uh, thank you to the Minister for early sight of her statement. The national standards are generally welcome, uh, but the key concern about this policy has always been how it will be delivered in practice, and in particular, how enough qualified staff will be recruited. So let me ask two questions. The standards for childminders providing funded hours say that they must begin training or at least have unsuccessfully applied for training <clears throat> within five years. Now, surely that means that some childminders could be providing funded hours 
for anywhere between five and ten years without having actually qualified. Is that really acceptable? And secondly, Unison yesterday published figures of early years workers in training, which show clearly that we will not achieve the required numbers in time. <clears throat> well, the Minister's own document today, uh, far from showing uh, that delivery is on track, it revealed that recruitment is already 17% behind target after only five months. So what new and additional measures does she plan in order to recruit the workforce we need? Marie Todd. So the, the requirement for training for childminders is proportionate um, given the number of children that they uh, work with and I think that, that it's very, very reasonable. In fact, childminders and all partner providers work very closely with the government to develop this national standard and I do believe it will deliver quality, I can assure you on that. In terms of the workforce, um, we recognise absolutely the challenges of recruiting the additional staff required. It is difficult, but it is achievable. As I said, the delivery board meetings have assured us that we are on track to deliver what we need to. Whilst <laughs> we absolutely are on track, I can, I can assure you that we're on track. Let me reiterate again the many ways that we have um, put in place to ensure that we are on track with workforce. So we have provided, in 2017-18, we funded the Scottish Funding Council to deliver 650 extra HNC courses. We've got 400 additional graduate level places. We expect most practitioners to become qualified through vocational on-the-job training routes, though, like SVQs. An uptake of early learning and childcare modern apprentices has increased significantly in 2017-18, up 21% when compared with the figure for the previous year, more than double what we anticipated. Uh, we move to the open questions, and can we have quite concise questions and answers, please? Uh, Rona Mackay, followed by Liz Smith. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister say when providers will know what the increase in the hourly funding rates will be? Marie Todd. So the agreement in the hourly funding rates is to be between the local authorities and the um, partner providers themselves. So the local authorities will announce the funding rates. I, ha I can assure you that there is work going on nationally to establish what is required to provide a sustainable and transparent funding rate. There's been a huge amount of work going on in that and I can assure you that the funding rates will increase over the course of this expansion to a fully sustainable rate in 2020. Liz Smith, followed by Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you. In light of the comments uh, that the Minister makes on page two about extending parental choice, can I ask what discussions the Minister has had with the independent school sector about how many partnership places will be available in their schools in session 2019-20? Marie Todd. So, as the member will be well aware that this expansion was targeted in to occur first, the expansion will happen first in the areas which need it most. Um, I am, can check with my officials what communication there has been with the attendant intent independent school sector but generally the expansion has first been in areas of high deprivation with um, favouring local authority expansion initially. I can assure you though that independent schools can apply to become funded um, partners. All they need to do is meet the national standard and they will be able to become funded partners. Fulton McGregor followed by Jenny Mara. Thank you, President Officer. I've had contact with partner nurseries in my constituency such as Lockview Nursery and Gart Kosh in relation to the rollout of 1140 hours and the difficulty they've had dealing with the council. Can the minister explain the importance of strong communication with such partner nurseries in achieving this bold and ambitious target? And can she outline what actions the government is taking to ensure local authorities engage fully with them throughout the process? Marie Todd. Thank you. I thank the member for that question. I'm aware that there are um, challenges in relationships between partner providers and local authorities in a number of areas through the country. Let me make absolutely clear, we expect local authorities and providers to work together meaningfully and in genuine partnership to deliver the expansion in early learning and childcare. The Scottish Government wrote to local authority directors of education in August this year to highlight the key role for local authority leaders to promote meaningful and genuine partnership working and to build trust and to strengthen the communication with providers and also to encourage the development of networks for sharing good practice. Jenny Mara followed by Alison Johnson. 
The Minister's statement says that the package includes funding to enable providers uh, to deliver at least the real living wage. Now, presumably many staff will be paid more as commensurate with their qualifications. Can she tell me what ratio of nursery teachers to other qualified staff the fund, her funding package allows for? Marie Todd. Um, what, sorry, could you get in the question again? Jenny Mara. Basically, how many nursing teachers does your funding package allow for? So that will depend on local circumstance. So it will depend on what's required in the local area. I can assure you that I'm glad that you welcome the living wage accreditation. I think it's one of the best parts, the living wage commitment is one of the best parts of this um, entire expansion. Um, and I can tell you that the living wage commitment in 2016, when we did the uh, groundwork to, to um, estimate how many people that would benefit, we estimated that up to 8,000 staff currently working in partner providing set settings would benefit from that commitment. Alison Johnson, followed by Tavish Scott. Thank you. I welcome the Minister's assurances that high quality childcare is underpinned by professional, dedicated and skilled staff. But some providers in Lothian region have expressed concerns that there's a lack of funding available for training staff aged over 25. Um, they say that the funding for, for those of this age to be put through training is a lot less than the under 25s. So can I ask what the Minister is doing specifically to attract those who might change career? into early learning and childcare, because clearly, given the challenges we face delivering this, um, this is an area that requires specific focus. Marie Todd. I thank the member for the question. I can assure you that there's ample capacity in, in the education system for um, I, I everyone who wants to enter this, this, enter this expansion. Um, we've also changed the amount of money that we pay on the modern apprenticeship that we've, and we, for older entrants. And we are working to remove the barriers for older entrants. We're very well aware that attracting career changers is a very important part of achieving the workforce that we want to achieve. A number of parents who've experienced the joy of raising their own parents then want to contribute to the sector afterwards. Tavish Scott, followed by Gil Patterson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. On the government's own figures published today, there are uh, that local authority nurses of nurseries rather have hired 18% fewer additional staff than forecast, and there are 4% 4 4 less childminders between 17 and 2018. Um, how does the government plan to address that, particularly given there is now some evidence that private uh, nursery staff, uh, so, uh, sorry, local authority uh, nurseries are gaining staff at the expense of private nurseries uh, because of the wage rates? Marie Todd. Thank you. I can assure you that our early data shows that we're on target to deliver the workforce re required for this. What's interesting about that is that, that the data also, when you look at the data, shows that there are more children in places in placement than we anticipated at this point. So despite the workforce being slightly under what we expected, the children actually in the 11.40 hours um, are, are, is higher than we anticipated. In terms of um, childminders, the, the reduction in childminder numbers was largely down to um, a, a, a drop in the number of inactive childminders. There's actually more childminders registered in order to delivering funding. And with regard to the third point that you raised, which was about local authorities um, attracting staff from partner providers, we've made it very clear to them, and COSLA has made it very clear to local authorities, that they must aim to recruit internally first. So um, in terms of assessing the capacity available in their entire local authority area, they have to be very careful not to disrupt that capacity by taking staff from one area and causing a shortage in another area. So they are very carefully working to ensure that they can internally recruit the staff they need to deliver the expansion. Gil Patterson, followed by Oliver Mundell. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. The summary statistics for schools in Scotland's published last week showed an impressive near universal uptake of funded early years in childcare amongst three and four year olds, and only a slight increase in the uptake of eligible two year olds on last year. <laughs> Therefore, can the Minister outline what action the Scottish Government will take to increase the uptake of eligible two year olds in the next coming year? Marie Todd. So the member asks a very, very important question because ensuring that those who will benefit most get early access to high quality funded DLC is absolutely key to realising the full benefits of this expansion. 
Um, the joint agreement with local governments gave them an ambitious target of 64% for the two-year-olds. We have a way to go with that. Um, and the delivery board data that we looked at, we were uh, ahead um, of what we, what we um, anticipated in terms of recruitment of two-year-olds. But you're right, there's more work to be done. The Children and Young Person Improvement Collaborate Collaborative is working with nine local authority areas in multi-agency teams to address those barriers and we'll share the outputs from that um, improvement practicum right across Scotland, consider other ways to support local authorities in their work on the two-year-old entitlement. Oliver Mundell, followed by Joan McAlpine. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm a bit confused, uh, Minister. I, I have businesses, uh, nursery businesses in my constituency who are being asked to deliver 11.40 hours in the new year and they're being told that they'll receive £4.08 while the local authorities' own uh, study, an independent review into uh, fair funding, found that the sustainable rate was actually £5.35. How can she expect these businesses to survive until 2020 with a discrepancy like that? Marie Todd. Um, I can assure the member that I'm aware of that situation and I can confirm that we are substantially increasing the level of investment right across the sector through the multi-year funding deal that we agreed with COSLA in April, including supporting the payment of sustainable rates to funded providers, which and I expect to see hourly rates increase significantly right across the country. John McAlpine, followed by Johan Lamont. Thank you. My question was actually related to the question just asked by Oliver Mundell. I have raised already with the Minister the issue of Sparklers Nursery, which is still waiting to hear from the local authority in Dumfries and Galloway, which rate it will be paid once the 1140 hours is rolled out in the town of Annan. Um, can the Minister give us any more detail about that specific local authority? And can she tell us if local authorities continue, if they're properly funded, but they continue to fail to pass on sustainable rates uh, to uh, partner providers, will the government do, do something else to intervene to force them to pay sustainable rates? Marie Todd. Um, I can assure you that my officials have been in contact with that particular local authority. Many local authorities are already using the additional resource available in 2018-19 to increase the rates paid to funded providers and further increases are expected next year as they transition towards the full sustainable rates for rollout of 1140 hours from August 2020. Scotland Excel are working very closely with providers and local authorities to develop technical guidance to support local authorities to set sustainable rates from for providers from 2020 and in the period from 2020 funded providers in the private or third sector offering this as part of the local phasing program let me be absolutely clear we expect local authorities to set rates locally that reflect their current assessment of a sustainable rate I have time for the final two questions if the first one isn't over long <laughs> Joanne Lamont followed by Claire Adamson I'll not take it personally. The national standard states that the real living wage will be paid to all childcare workers delivering the funded entitlement. Wouldn't ensuring that all providers are living wage accredited be a more robust means of upholding the fair work principles? Marie Todd. As you know, this government absolutely supports um, and encourages all employers to become living wage accredited. I wouldn't disagree. And the last question is Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Minister how important childminders are to the delivery process and how the Joint Delivery Board will ensure childminding communities are fully engaged in the process going forward? Uh, ex excuse me, Ms Adamson. Could we stop having conversations across bench, please? And Ms Adamson, would you say your question again? Because I certainly didn't hear it. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Minister um, how um, childminders are involved in the process going forwards and how the Joint Delivery Board will ensure that they're fully engaged in the consultation processes going forward? Marie Todd. I thank the member for the question. We have very good relationships with SCMA and I'm delighted that our parental survey indicates that considerable demand for parents. We've seen an increase in the number of childminders registered to deliver the funded um, entitlement and um, I expect childminders to play an absolutely vital part in the delivery of this, particularly for eligible two-year-olds. 
That concludes the statement on early learning and childcare expansion. I will move on to the next item of business as soon as everyone's got themselves settled. <laughs>